Welcome to the ICE podcast, supported by the U.S. Soybean Export Council, an initiative to enable the coal chain industry of India to be future ready. Hello listeners, a warm welcome to all of you to this episode of the ICE podcast on coal chain technology. Today, we have an interesting topic, a little away from food, but this is a topic on pharmaceuticals. We are going to listen to a talk by an industry veteran on the topic of cold chain for vaccine distribution. Vaccine is currently a hot topic and you all know about it. We are looking towards the upcoming uh, COVID vaccine. But then today's talk is about all the vaccines that are getting distributed through the country and what kind of cold chain is uh, required or what are the other challenges and what are the other systems for cold chain uh, vaccine distribution. So today it's my pleasure to introduce you a very experienced industry veteran, Mr. Ryan Viegas. Ryan has been a, a, a hardcore uh, logistics person, supply chain management person in the pharmaceutical industry. He is currently the advisor to ClearSynth Labs for supply chain strategy, IT, SAP and human resources. Ryan has advised in the past the Mumbai International Airport's new CSC Pharma Excellence Center. He has also advised a startup company named Delivery and he has advised other global pharmaceutical companies on the topic of supply chain management and supply chain strategy in logistics. Prior to his advisory roles, Ryan was head of logistics Asia Pacific at Teva Pharmaceuticals. He was also the vice president supply chain and procurement at Watson Pharma, Activas, Allergen and several other top companies like Bayer, Sandoz, Matrix, Mylan and Teva API. A key speaker and chair at industry conferences in Europe, Asia, US, Ryan has several publications to his credit and has been on the jury of the Asia Pacific industry competitions on best practices in supply chain management. Ryan has initiated several innovative practices in international supply chain security, cold chain logistics and procurement areas. Ryan has received several industry awards for outstanding contribution in pharma segment. In 2018, he received the Lifetime Achievement Award in 2015 and the Supply Chain Officer of the Year Award in 2012. Ryan has uh, demonstrated excellent leadership qualities and has resulted in his teams receiving numerous industry awards in supply chain, procurement and logistics. Let's hear Ryan Viegas on the topic of cold chain for vaccine distribution. Welcome, Ryan. Good day, friends. My name is Ryan Viegas, and I am currently an independent advisor to the pharma and healthcare industry with special expertise in cold chain logistics. As we prepare ourselves for perhaps the largest immunization program globally, let us focus on our own country with a large population spread over a large area with varied terrain and temperatures. India is said to be the pharma factory of the world, producing amongst the highest volumes of pharmaceutical products, including vaccines. As we are aware, we are also the largest exporters of pharmaceutical products and vaccines by quantity to the world, including to highly regulated markets. India also has one of the largest immunization programs that include oral polio vaccine, tuberculosis, diphtheria, measles, etc. Except for the oral polio vaccine, where a storage temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius is required, the other vaccines require plus 2 to 8 degrees Celsius storage temperature. Therefore, the question on top of mind is, are we ready for COVID-19 vaccine, the storage, distribution and administering on national level. As per current available information, each manufacturer of vaccines are reporting different storage conditions. 
namely minus 70 degrees Celsius, minus 20 degrees Celsius and plus 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. In addition, we need to understand that if the vaccine is freeze dried, the dilutant will need to be stored at plus 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. This would make the immunization supply chain even more complex. Given that the whole population needs to be vaccinated, unlike most other vaccines which are primarily administered to children, the scope of the immunization program is enormous. As India has very good experience in handling immunization of plus 2 to 8 degrees Celsius vaccines, it may be prudent for us to focus on those vaccines that are stable at this temperature range. We also understand that the election voting model is being evaluated for administering the vaccine throughout the country, which could make sense as we have seen that the majority of the population can be accessed. The area of concern would be to first have documented standard operating procedures, not only for the immunization of the population, but also the following. The cold chain temperature monitoring across all stages of the supply chain, Preventive maintenance of storage and distribution equipment. Evaluation and reporting of deviation and rejection. Monitored destruction of rejected vaccines. If we ignore this, we may achieve the immunization numbers but compromise on the effectiveness of the doses. There could be major challenges in storage and distribution of cold chain vaccines in rural areas where it would necessitate availability of cold storage facilities, continuous monitoring, diesel generator sets, preventive maintenance, backup equipment in case of breakdown, mobile workshop teams for repairs and maintenance along with spares and DG sets. There also needs to be use of mobile refrigerated vaccine vans to each to reach the remote locations. Even if we have the above storage and equipment infrastructure in place, one of the biggest potential gaps is the proper selection, recruitment and training of storage and distribution staff across all levels of the supply chain. In our zeal to immunize large numbers where targets would probably be set with respect to number of vaccines administered per day or per week, there is a high risk that in the event the quality of the vaccine is compromised due to temperature deviations, this may not get reported and the effectiveness of the vaccine program may be reduced. In my opinion, employees and staff of pharma and healthcare companies, together with logistics service providers serving the pharma industries, must be roped in to work in a collaborative manner with the government authorities to serve the nation during this time. Finally, I am very positive that given our experience in handling nationwide immunization through vaccines, India would be able to overcome the challenges and come out successful. Thank you for having me on this discussion and permitting me to share my expertise in pharma supply chain and cold chain logistics.